Welcome to this latest episode of Damien's Market Update. Now, if you enjoy this video in any way, please make sure you hit that like button, but also subscribe to our channel so you can get these each month. So I always in these episodes look at what's been going on in investment markets and what to look out for in the weeks and months ahead. Now, before I start this video, I'd like to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Net Wealth. Now, Net Wealth's wealth management service combines a comprehensive, low-cost investment solution with access to qualified advisors. They recently launched My Net Wealth, which is a digital dashboard that combines all your savings and investments from multiple providers in one place. There, My Net Wealth's Wealth Planner tool helps you visualize your current wealth and apply it to your future needs. It takes into account various factors such as age, investments, pensions, tax wrappers, and expected contributions or withdrawals, and calculates the likelihood of you achieving your goals. And daily updates make it easy to track the value and performance of your wealth. Now, I've used a demo of these tools and they provide a great way to introduce high level cash flow planning into your personal finances. My Net Wealth also provides a library of useful personal finance content and if you ever need advice or guidance their highly qualified team is always there to help. You can find out more information about Net Wealth and sign up for My Net Wealth in 30 seconds by visiting mynetwealth.com. Please remember the value of your investments can go down as well as up, so you may get back less than you invest. Last month's update was titled Keep an Eye on the Dollar. At the time, the market consensus was for the US dollar to continue to weaken further, and many investors had gone all in, betting that inflation had peaked and central banks would stop tightening monetary policy, which is a fancy way of saying that they would stop raising interest rates. Now, greed was the overriding emotion driving investor behavior. And you could tell if you looked at the CNN Greed and Fear Index, it was actually in flashing extreme greed at that point. And we saw the FTSE 100 push to new all-time highs and the S&P 500 break out of its downtrend channel that dated back to the start of 2022. I've talked a lot about that channel in recent months on this show. You can see if you look at your stock market app. But I closed out last show by warning that if the market narrative or any of the assumptions, especially the one around the Fed pivot, proved false, then it could cause a shakeup in the US dollar index, which in turn could cause the rally in bonds and equities to unravel. At the time, the US dollar index was showing some signs of life, moving just above 101 to just below the 104 level. And it's then 50-day moving average, which was just around the same level. I suggested that if the US dollar broke above 104 and ultimately 105, then we could see a reversal of the asset price moves we'd seen up to that point in 2023. As it turned out, the US dollar index sort of deliberated for the first half of February before it did break above those key technical levels that I highlighted. And at the same time, bond yields started to move higher as bond investors began worrying about inflation again and the robustness of the US economy in particular. Meanwhile, equity investors seemed either unfazed or unbelieving. It turned out that the bond market was right to be worried as subsequently released US economic data showed that the US economy was proving stronger than expected. Then, when new inflation data suggested that inflation might prove more stubborn than previously thought, equity markets were sent reading and the 2023 rally in US equities began to unwind. It was a pattern repeated in the Eurozone and the UK's new economic data on this side of the Atlantic also began to challenge the prevailing investor narrative. Ultimately, February was a wake-up call for markets that we could see higher interest rates for longer. That has been something many equity investors had been having trouble with believing. By the end of February, it meant the equity market winners and losers list could have been renamed the stronger US dollar winners and losers list. So, for example, the FTSE 100 rose 1.35% during the month of February, while the Nikkei 225 in Japan rose 0.43%, as both benefited from weaker domestic currencies versus the US dollar. European equities also performed quite well, up around 1.5%, as measured by the FTSE Euro First 300 index. At the other end of the scale, the laggards were emerging market and US equities. Now, 
we're basing that on local currency terms, right? Taking into account the currency moves between the dollar and the pound. If you look at the MSCI Emerging Market Index, it was down 4.71% in February, while the S&P 500 fell 2.61%. Both of those were hampered by that stronger dollar. Meanwhile, bond yield rallied, meaning the value of most bond funds took a hit in February as well. The 10-year US Treasury yield rose above 3.9% by the end of February to its highest level since November. The combination of weaker equity markets and bond markets in tandem started to feel a lot like 2022 all over again. But now we are in March, so can the bond market give us any hints as to whether the pullback in equity markets will continue or whether things will stabilise? I mean, after all, the bond market did preempt the equity market weakness in February. Interestingly, March was only hours old when we saw another seismic move higher in bond yields. Stronger than expected leading economic indicators in the Eurozone, China and the US, combined with higher than expected Eurozone inflation data, saw bond yields spike higher globally. In the US, markets began betting that the US Federal Reserve's benchmark interest rate would hit 5.5% by July this year, up from the previously predicted peak of 5.2%, which was the consensus only two weeks ago. Unsurprisingly, US bond yields burst higher, with the 10-year US Treasury yield breaking above 4%. It was a similar pattern in the UK, with the 10-year UK gilt yield rallying to its highest level since late October, which was a month after the Bank of England had to intervene in gilt markets following that ill-fated mini budget. Now, the increase in yields was also seen across shorter dated gilt, and it meant that the rates on the best fixed rate mortgage deals out there have started to slowly drift higher in the UK once again. Unsurprisingly, equity markets took another wobble in March after initially trying to break higher, but the wobble, it's not yet been significant, but it does seem that equity markets are now suggesting that robust economic data is positive news, believing that the economy can in fact withstand higher interest rates. The narratives seem to be rewritten all the time. In February, it was characterised by equity markets ignoring the bond market's warnings of robust inflation data and stronger than expected economic data. March has seemingly started off with equity markets heeding the warning and either downplaying it or hijacking it as a reason that the equity market rally can continue. So at the moment, we're at a point that seems to be an inflection point where markets could go higher or lower. The danger is that when equity market narratives are fickle, as they seem to be at the moment, the corresponding market trends can be too. So we are at this inflection point. It seems that all possibilities are still on the table, including a breakout in stock markets or indeed the bear market taking hold once again. The same can be said pretty much for bond markets. And between now and the next show, we have key central bank policy decisions from the likes of the European Central Bank, the US Federal Reserve and the Bank of England. And these are likely to cause bouts of volatility in investment markets. The same is likely whenever new economic data is released, especially if that data relates to inflation. The Data points around inflation have always been among the most volatile days when they're released in markets in during the recent months. And if we've learned anything from the last month, it's that it's a brave person who goes all in with their bets as to whether we will have bond markets and equity markets burst higher or lower. What happens next is still all up for grabs. For now, keep watching the US dollar index and bond yields. They've served us well in the last couple of months, given some early indicators, but they aren't foolproof. If you want an equity market threshold to watch, then if we break below 3,900 on the S&P 500, then the US equity market will really be under threat as we will be breaking back into that downtrend that started at the beginning of of 2022. And it could be a sign that the bear market will really take hold once again. So that is it for this episode of Damien's Market Update. As ever, if you found that useful, please make sure you hit that like button. Leave any questions below this video and I will answer them. But most of all, please make sure you subscribe to our channel. Oh.